Hi everyone, Lauren Kinghorn, Inspiring Mompreneurs, and today I am with Vidya Ravi in India. And Vidya is going to tell us about her amazing Facebook marketing business that she has. Vidya, take it away. <laughs> Hello, Lauren. How how are you? Like this is I have been listening to your podcast for quite a while. It's been amazing what you guys do. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm from India. I run a Facebook ads agency with 15 uh, employees. so we are doing pretty good we are one of the best in the market we have uh, work with coaches course creators consultants and a very specific ecom companies where they are original manufacturers in the industry so we have up to 42x returns on client accounts uh, so if they have wow. $1000 and they got $42000 out that's how it means wow uh, so and we have 80% close rates on cold audience so sure that's, that's amazing because i am i had a look at what the industry standard is and it's like 4 to 1 that you could make maybe $4000 if you spend $1000 so yeah that's usually 42 to 1 wow yeah. so that's 10 times the industry standard that's amazing how do you get those kind of results uh again it is not like for everybody right you got to have the right offer in place as well but uh, this particular um thing happened when we least expected out of it because that client didn't have a right didn't have the exact offer uh, yeah he had like ran a few launches before he's amazing but he had around like 30 to 40% uh, close rate some calls before mm-hmm. he came to us and then when we took over and we just did that launch uh it he had around like 70 to 80 percent close rates and wow. uh, uh we spent around like 2600 dollars on that launch it was a small launch uh and he made 110 grand uh wow. so that's within a month space so which is like uh, there are a few things that we tried the first thing is we actually found out the offer on the call like literally on the call with clients that's what we usually suggest to many people like you don't have to frame the offers exactly you know you don't have to be a perfectionist in order to sell something you have to actually be able to customize and um, coachable on the call uh, with the people that you are in so you can see what the people want you can start writing notes down like okay so this is what she wants create the create the bonuses create a uh, like new packages on the call see which one actually matches most of the people and then start mm-hmm. selling them as a as an as a permanent package but you have to immediately know who your audience is first you can't just say like hey i have a sales page for $3000 and now i have to sell it that doesn't how it works you have something but do the people need that what do they need mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so people don't actually when people ha- hear about market research they don't understand what really is market research they really have to talk to customers that's how it happened like before our generation like it that's how it happened people actually go to real people talk about what they need and then create based on it now mm-hmm. we don't do it we just create something we want to sell and push and push and push and we actually make sales so ugly so mm-hmm. that's what we changed with the entire thing like we told him like we will get you like calls like we will get so many calls on your calendar uh, and they will all be warmed up nobody will come come and say like hey i don't even know you why am i even buying from you kind of thing so they will be so warmed up by the time they come to you you just have to actually customize the package right then and there for them so you know they it gets so phenomenal at the end of the day wow. nobody knows like uh this is what he's going to sell me right so everybody has a customized package now yes his core package is still going to be the same okay mm-hmm. it's a 3000 dollar package it's still going to be the same but what he provides in it the bonuses keep changing so it's probably a 20 minutes class like 20 minutes video that he's going to make out of let's say uh you're coming like for his cards and you say like hey i have tried all these things and i'm telling you a 3000 dollar coaching package okay but you say like i have all these courses and i don't even know what i'm doing with them and i say like okay so that's why we also have this bonus that you actually get the mindset call the weekly calls and then there is an accountability partner with my team like my team one of my team will be always coaching you so you are not actually getting lost anywhere so 
i create the i created this package right now so it means that you know as and when you create you see the problem for the clients so mm. okay so this is what they want this is like they don't want a coach they don't they want a partner who wants to actually be with them support them and actually scale them too mm-hmm. okay that's at least this area but mm-hmm. there are some other problems based on niche so mm-hmm. you create the package customize it and over time that customization becomes permanent like okay everybody asks for the same thing i'm going to provide this bonus before they even ask so that even sells better like oh that's what i thought like that i have that problem you already have a solution for it right mm-hmm. so that's how right. it goes so the sales close rates gets better and better wow so are those your typical clients then are they coaches who are looking to expand their coaching practice yeah we work with coaches and course creators uh, like 75 to 80% of our clients are coaches and course creators the infopreneur niche mm-hmm. so that's who we work with primarily Mm-hmm. and then do you only do the facebook advertising side or do you help with that final call this actual sales call as well or does your client do the sales call themselves they do the sales call but if they are actually bad at it uh, we listen to the calls we expand mm-hmm. on them and say like these are the things that you need to try in your sales calls again that's not under our package but we do it anyway because at the end of the day we want them to convert it's not about mm-hmm. like hey i do the ads and you know whatever happens after that it's on your end i can't say that like mm-hmm. that doesn't even fly that doesn't even feel right uh, even though the package <laughs> ends when they get on a call we still actually help people to con- convert because many people are not sales people they are yeah. better coaches mm-hmm. they are not good with sales though so that doesn't mean they can't actually change another person's life they just have to have the right person to push them through uh they have to ask the right questions they have to say the right answers so once they do that they should be good so so you very results them. driven yeah so you yeah. you really want to see the end result for your client you're not just going to get your yeah. client in and say okay here's your facebook ads we're going to run these facebook ads for you and then you're on your own <laughs> yeah you that's want- not going to happen with us no <laughs> that's me Okay. Okay. Really good. Wow, that's so different to what I've seen out there in terms of what Facebook advertising is all about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then do you only use Facebook or do you use other platforms as well? Right now we just use Facebook and Instagram. Uh but for very few e-com clients we actually take them into Google as well. but mm-hmm. that's when they already are successful with facebook and instagram so we don't uh, take on multiple platforms at once mm-hmm. and then what's the smallest client you take and what's the biggest client you take what's your average you know um so if somebody comes to you and they've never run a facebook ad before what yeah, would you yeah. tell them <laughs> i would ask them to try it if they are techy if not it's best to actually leave it to somebody who knows it it's mm-hmm. it may not, it may not be us but somebody who actually really knows ads they can take care of it because most of the times we get the accounts when everything has been like depleted like uh the account has been in it's, it's in bad shape there are multiple rejections another ad would get them would push them to the banning position so that's how it comes to us so it's like why do you even try this like when you clearly know nothing about facebook policies right mm-hmm. so if that's the case like if you're not willing to learn and then try everything then it's not the best case scenario to diy it but if you are going to actually like let's say you have an investment you have like around a few thousand dollars set on spending you can test it you can scale it and then you can actually hire an agency to actually do it for you okay. and if that's the case hire if you don't have money learn and do it not just you know some people try it it gets disabled and that's some of the mess to actually deal with so yeah. i would rather do learn decisions like take the learn decisions like instead of just going blind on it mhm so you'd say it's from when they've got 15000 dollar ad spend that's the best time to start and then they can start scaling their business from there we at we the minimum that we start with for the clients is 1500 to 2000 in ad spend per month 15 okay. sorry so 1500 they, or 15000 1500 to 2000 the minimum oh, oh, okay 1500 to 2000 so the maximum like we have we have had up to uh, clients who spend 150 to 200000 in ad spend per month the max mm-hmm. so we that's 
we work with eight figure clients but we also work with six figure clients and some startups so it doesn't matter they have to actually we provide the same support for everybody mm-hmm. so it's just the uh, amount the mindset changes when it actually moves into eight figure they already know the ads are just a means to get more leads in and, and to keep consistently get, building the brand awareness when they are into eight, eight figures so mm-hmm. startups and for six figures it's more like this is what actually is their livelihood so mm-hmm. there is more just more pressure on both sides that's mm-hmm. that's the yeah. in thing but the support from our end it's going to not change much and what are your averages look like if you've got somebody coming in right at the beginning they've got their first 1500 dollars ready to spend with you um what is your average that you would get them back in terms of usually we ask for what funnel it is right mm-hmm. so if it's an untested funnel we need at least like two months to say like okay mm-hmm. oh, this is going to work if it's not going to work we will also give them all the funnel recommendations so mm-hmm. okay change all these things and put a split test on it so we can test it mm-hmm. okay so funnel recommendations has always been the part of the package for us because it helps uh you know people go land on the page they just return back they don't they mm-hmm. don't even know like they don't even go to the order form so at yeah. this point there is no point in actually just spending lot spending a lot so we will actually say them like hey this is a review of your funnel can you actually this this is the this is where people pass a lot so change all these things into this and uh, put a split test so we can send some traffic in there so that's how we actually make the changes if they come mm-hmm. in they immediately are not going to say a return if they it's no it's not tested if they don't even know whether their offer works they don't have any market research going on so if that's the case it's going to be tough to even for me like to guess like this is mm-hmm. what they are going to get because everything else is a variable if my if i can just say like my ads are going to convert that's not going to make sense mm-hmm. uh because the funnel we don't know whether it's converts the offer we don't know whether it converts so it depends on all these other areas to say like you know okay mm-hmm. so this is what you're going to get but we have had clients who immediately got successful from the ads uh from the first from day one even uh wow. from the first month uh that's that's important like should we have we, we still work with this client like her name is elaine so she's amazing she hasn't run ads she's completely like she has not even in the, she's not even in the online market it's completely new for her so she did this funnel she wanted to try um uh, and then from day one she has she has completely been successful she was at 2x now she is at 4x and now she has like three different funnels so it's just it just keeps increasing now and all her funnels has been like 3 to 4x minimum so uh, she has, that's how it happens like her funnel is already really good she came for an order to see like whether her funnel is going to be good and then she actually moved into uh moved into a client base and immediately she was already successful so uh, that's how it usually works like um it has to it has to, depends on both the funnel and the ads and so if your funnel is good already it doesn't need much time it immediately takes off if the funnel needs tweaks it takes some time for us to actually make it work but okay. either way facebook ads work it just needs all the all the balance yes yeah yeah you've got you've, there's a lot of moving parts <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Definitely. Yes. laughs> okay, and so let's talk a little bit about you, Vidya, because um I believe you're also a mom and um you mentioned you could talk about how being a mom has actually made you a better marketer. I'm very interested to hear that. Yeah, I guess I guess many of the moms would probably say this, but by the time you actually talk to your kid, you also know like how to react to every situation. uh like it's you don't know how it's going to be in a particular day uh like how is going to like break something if he's not available for a particular like 5 minutes i already like oh something is going to happen now so i have to go <laughs> kind of thing. so you are so you are so active in your mind like you know you are prepared for all the situations and that is another how do i say this facebook ads work on assessing people's reactions to how uh you how the words are written right mm-hmm. so when you talk when you talk to your kid that's what happens you you assess like you try to manipulate your kid you try to actually say like oh 
if he, if I go this way, he's going to this way. I'm I'm going to do this. So if I say I hey don't do this, he's going to do this. So let's say I hey, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> so it automatically happens. Uh, so I don't know how much I'm going to enjoy this face of my son, but uh, that's what is happening right now, right? So yeah. I say like hey please don't eat that fruit please it's so healthy please do not eat that fruit okay and he he just gobbles it up i'm like okay that's the job is done here so, so it's human psychology it's really helped you with human psychology understanding these little beings helps you understand <laughs> yeah we, we all came from that face you know we <laughs> actually change a lot <laughs> how old is your son he's six hi oh, six mine's seven okay similar age <laughs> yeah like that's how it happens and also the other face the dirty face the guilt right the mom guilt like whenever you start working it actually automatically happens like oh uh i'm not with him i'm mm. i probably he thinks i'm not loving him enough like because i'm in this computer like all day like how am i even going to like manage this mm. uh even when i go out there is an emergency call and i attend it and like i feel so guilty that's how it i felt like when he was like around 2 years old that's how it felt like oh my god i'm doing something so wrong but over time he i understood like this this is this is the guilt this is the guilt that i don't have to have this is mm. this is the thing that i don't deserve uh so i started employing certain things with him like okay so this is how mom works you can come sit with me you can see what i'm doing uh maybe you don't understand now but i will show you like in a week like what happens when i what i do the, when i do this right now what happens for these people in a week i will show wow. you so it starts becoming like he started adoring me uh like whoa my uh, he uh, when I, he he has this class like um, that uh i think it's for environmental science like uh where it says my family and it says like my mom my, who used to, his teacher asks in the live class like who used to cook in your uh, house and i don't cook ever <laughs> so he's like uh i my my aunt like he calls he calls my maid aunt so my aunt cooks uh, and every children there says like my mother cooks and he's like why should my why should mom's cook uh, she's working she's already like oh. tired why she, she she doesn't have to cook and that's uh, amazing that's the my yeah that's a mindset he got and none of the other children even knew that mothers don't have to cook wow that's amazing so you're showing him a whole new way i think by the time your son is a teenager or maybe before that he'll be ready running facebook ads <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why we don't really care like whether he's just going to college or not as long as he's disciplined enough to actually make his own decisions and follow yeah. through it we are fine <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing and then um do you have a husband as well does he also does he work with you or does he go out to work uh no he we were we both work from home so ah, amazing <laughs> okay that's great yeah and does your son go to school now like did, 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 are you homeschooling or is your son going to a school he's going to he's he's uh, doing online classes he has school uh okay. i'm let's say i'm not a a good teacher <laughs> i would rather actually just uh, have them listen to someone else than me uh mm -hmm. it's there is a i think there is a fine mark where you actually become a teacher and you become a mother and uh, i don't deal with teacher teaching well so uh, i get to how do i say results driven mm -hmm. so and that doesn't go well with the kids <laughs> so <laughs> i would rather like okay you you do you i i'm going to do me so uh huh. that's separate lines if you want any help i'm always here to help but i'm not going to be your homeschooling mom no that's not me uh also <laughs> okay yeah. and uh so what is your a typical day look like do you have any things that like morning rituals that you do to kind of get you started in your day or do you just like get your desk and start working <laughs> uh i do gratefulness journaling uh journaling has saved my life like a lot of ways uh yeah. because this is this is a niche where every day you actually there is no typical day when you ask that question that's what immediately came out in my mind like there is no typical day for a facebook ads agency it every day there are new things that comes up 
some we we pretty we pretty much know some bomb is going to explode somewhere here so <laughs> like in the facebook ads world so it's kind of okay we are going to deal with it we have always in a mindset like okay so if something is going to uh happen we will be fixing it that's fine that's part of our life so gratefulness has actually kept me grounded uh for a lot of things like within the family within the business within my team like everywhere that's how uh i think i keep my mind solid and active and positive uh that's one of my routines i actually don't give up so gratefulness and other than that everything else is actually kind of reckless like i <laughs> I work based on how the previous day ends like sometimes i work until like late nights because i'm a night owl i don't work early so uh i sleep and i i do work until midnight or later even so i wow. wake up at uh, around like 8 or 9 and that's how i have always been my kids school is late like even when he went to school like literally he went to school uh he was his school starts around like 10 o'clock so i don't Yeah, like I just wake up at nine, get him ready, send him. So, uh, no, there is this uh, comfort in being an entre- entrepreneur that we actually take and understand. Um, okay, so the nine o'clock is when I, eight o'clock is when I wake. I finish all my work within ten, and then by ten or ten thirty, I start my work. And then I do two two hours work, then I take off, then start my work around four again. So okay. that's. uh that's how i plan differently i guess like because most of my clients are from us and canada mm-hmm. and australia so and uk so they are in different time zones so i want to work a little bit for each of these people but also take my time off uh so i split my day into like three parts uh some time in the morning some time in the afternoon and some time in the late evenings uh so i am available for all these people mm. and for your child so it's good. amazing but that is such a good yeah. balance yeah yeah <laughs> we like to think so <laughs> <laughs> and where do you live in india which which city is is it a city that you live in in this or a small town it's in city like it's a capital city of one of the states in india so uh, uh-huh. chennai it's called chennai okay. uh, it's southern india okay right and is that near the beach or not on the beach or like you know, what, what do you have around you like i i don't know india i haven't been there so right <laughs> yeah it's like covered by three i mean the place that i live in uh it's like 20 kilometers from the sea uh-huh. uh so it's not much it's probably a one hour one hour drive from here uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. But, uh, but yeah it's closer uh, many people okay. don't even see seas so mm-hmm. that's better but uh this is This is much better. It is like an IT hub, so uh, there ah, are so many companies, okay. uh, which means there is also pollution. So uh-huh. it's a typical city. Uh, but yeah, we also live uh, nearby, not so much near, but nearby city. As I said, like it's probably forty-five minutes to one hour drive from here, uh, but it's still closer. Uh, and also, India is covered from three parts by sea, uh, by ocean. So Uh, many there are many people like in the southern parts there are a lot of seas that you can actually see oh lovely and do you like doing that kind of, i mean what what is what is what do you do for fun what do you do for leisure <laughs> i read <laughs> i i love fictions uh i love books uh, uh i yeah. have i love romances and fantasy novels so i read a lot and i also actually like to think that's also one of the biggest advantages i have as a fiction card marketer because i love telling stories because i i was i read a lot of books before i became an entrepreneur i used to read like 1000 books a year uh wow. so i read a lot yeah i read fast i read a lot i love to actually love i love stories i love telling people like how i love i mean we all i think we we were in the generation where we grew up with harry potter in our lives all day so uh so it means that i grew up reading a lot of fiction until i until like 3 4 i guess four years back i have never read i have never read even one non fiction unless it's a school subject so <laughs> so i non fiction is not my type at all but after i became an entrepreneur it's kind of like i guess necessary to actually have self help and motivational books uh in your reading list which slowed me down with uh, all the other fictions that i have so my favorite time would be to actually just 
go wander around a corner and start reading something <laughs> even if i get some time i that's what i would like to do so yeah other than that i love beaches uh, uh-huh. so we go we go there some sometimes so and i bet your son loves reading as well then as he just started learning to read yeah he started to read and uh, he loves stories uh, he is so adamant on hearing at least like two or three stories a day uh, so his dad is kind of you know like reading all these stories so he can tell him uh, because now we are learning a lot like all these different stories so he is actually occupied all the time uh, so yeah he is getting better at it uh, he is reading uh-huh. a lot uh, he is Uh, he's hearing a lot he's learning he's going learning. that's that's another part <laughs> yeah <laughs> and tell me um your clients so your clients are mainly canada us and that sort of thing have you ever traveled to those countries and uh, have you met any of your clients personally no nope. all the that's digital. like one of the no uh, that's the biggest i guess problem i have met probably some of my coaches but not my clients yet uh so i have never been to us that's a problem like i have been to other like so i have been to malaysia and i have been to thailand and i have been to all these other places but not to us so that also limits like because most of our clients are us that limits not seeing them at and when we thought like we could apply for it uh yeah this happened and we just thought like okay maybe at some some point later in my life Although I must say I also um you know I'm here in South Africa and my clients are mostly US as well so it's interesting and you don't really ever get you know I also haven't been to the US yeah. <laughs> you don't right. get to see them but I mean with this kind of with Zoom you can see people anywhere in the world wherever you are it's amazing it's amazing yeah exactly wow. like my entire team is all over the world uh, like Uh, like my project manager is US many of my copywriters are in US and some ah. of my another project manager is in Australia and someone is in Philippines someone is in Singapore so it's like wow. so uh, uh, someone is in China so we have like so uh, diverse set of team yeah. uh, this is actually cool uh, i guess you have like, a really uh, big team so sure, you yeah. have a huge team vidya how many people do you have on your on your team then 15 15 wow and all working remotely all from wherever they are that's amazing yeah sure. it's a four, my four uh, four VAs that work with me like uh, they are in house uh, mm-hmm. so other than that all the other 11 people they actually work everybody is remote that's amazing wow so you've got a really big business then <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> yeah we are yeah we are close to seven figures we will hit seven figures this year so So that is amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. And um so sure, what else was I going to ask? Um how long did it take you to build to this level of a business? I mean to, I I'm I struggled to even hire my first person. I I I found that quite a big step to actually go from one <laughs> solopreneur to hiring people. Yeah. But I mean here you are with 15. Is it easier after you've hired your first one? <laughs> That's a good question actually like I remember like telling my coach like I am a solo kana I don't want anybody else in my business this is me like this is my baby I don't want anybody in like occupying this area and even then like it felt like you know I I'm the only one who can take up take care of my clients uh, uh like I do uh I have complete um capability to actually make them happy I don't know like if I let anybody in and they actually don't do as well as I do which i was pretty confident at that time that nobody else can actually do as much as i do uh it will it would be a disaster because i have grown this like very very consistently and it was it was a lot of sweat and tears so uh i was not ready to actually hire and i said like i'm okay like but he said like if you are not going to hire you are not going to grow that's that's mm-hmm. as easy as that like you don't have to hire and it's simple uh but you also don't have to grow like uh, if you don't mm-hmm. want to grow at beyond this point that's okay too like it's not like you have to everybody has to have like a seven or eight figure business mm-hmm. but that's another problem i have to grow i was pretty i was a a type i, I guess type a personality i actually want to go i want to win i want to actually succeed both for me and my clients and uh, that is that's a problem then then i have to hire as he says 
then i started hiring my first person and she was amazing like literally amazing i started putting all these things and she immediately knows what she, what i'm thinking about like uh, okay so uh, i wouldn't even put the complete task name on it i would just say like this is the client name this is the link you go ahead and do whatever you do that's it wow <laughs> that's, how, that's how i started hiring because i'm not i, I told you already i'm not good at teaching so <laughs> I, i just got <laughs> <laughs> now we know how I am not homeschooling so uh, so uh, it started off that way and then she uh, to be to be honest she's amazing like uh, even with just those few statements she does a perfect job wow uh, and i was like wow is this how hiring feels like it's it's this easy and then i st- and then i hired another person it didn't work out i hated it i literally hated it and then i realized like okay so not every person is going to be the same then i started putting more input into it like okay so this is not i want what i want i started seeing attitudes i started seeing how people respond to situations so i started making the hiring hiring process more complex uh so they have to respond to pressure we know how facebook ads agencies work they have to be reactive they have to be like keeping their cool even in the time of pressure so that's how i started my picking my entire team like they have to be uh, detailed oriented they have to be like a uh, really really good at handling pressure so and they have to be like giving giving back the assignments within 24 hours whatever the situation is so that's how i started hiring and it became so much better after the first three or four hires it got so much better because at this point i already had like copywriters i already had my assistants i already have designers but now the next part brought and i hated project management like uh that's it's a lot of people interaction i love systems <laughs> so <laughs> i love working with systems i love that being that uh person who brings in sales rather than talking to people a lot so uh-huh. which means um i don't i i can't actually talk with people all day like gather my team become that huggy uh, type where you know you actually cool them down you actually like hug them uh, inspire them come on that's not me like why do i have to actually do this? and then my my coach again she, uh, he came in and said like why don't you just hire a project manager why do you have to do this like if you don't do if you don't have to see that's the important thing you don't have to do anything in your business like mm. as long as you have something that you love in your business you can just do that and just mm. do uh, delegate everything else in your wow. in your company uh and i started doing that like i started bringing project managers and she was a godsend literally like uh, she started being this huggable teddy bear and uh, people started loving her the tasks were getting much faster like people loved the entire company and the overall climate inside the company changed entirely so uh then i brought in another project manager she was good so she was also doing the same thing and the whole company we started hiring more copywriters more designers more bees so that's just started going getting better and better <laughs> now i just talk with my team like half hour a week that's it like and they actually i we just do two calls a week uh 15 minutes to 15 to 20 minutes call each and that's that's the maximum that they actually converse with me if they have any questions they slack me or if they actually have any other things that they have to talk about the project managers get to me and they also know the project managers are pretty responsive usually but also they know my moods and they actually know how to actually respond to me uh so it's easier to actually be a leader than actually be i can just bring in clients i can tell them what converts and what doesn't convert i can handle the clients but the other team thing they are doing so much better with this it's like a small world that we created wow. together so it's, it's so good <laughs> wow but vidya you look so young can i ask how old you are you look so young to have all of this accomplished yeah i'm i'm 32 so 32 uh, wow and about to have a seven figure business <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> but yeah i mean wow. i guess uh i guess yeah uh, um, almost everybody in my team are clo- older than me but it doesn't matter they all, all they all bring different skill sets into the company 
Mm. And at the end of the end of the day, actually, they they keep saying uh, saying it. I don't know, but even yesterday we had a call, and they said like, "Hey, you are the leader that we want." Like, I have worked with multiple owners. Nobody has actually like handled the team, handled the clients, handled the decision making this perfectly. And I was like, "No, we are talking about someone else." Like, <laughs> I'm not that person. I'm trying to be a better person every day, but I'm not there yet. But I will be. So. that's how it feels like every day i'm learning i'm learning i'm learning i'm learning in marketing i'm learning in ads i'm learning even after like all these years it still feels like i'm learning in team building i'm learning learning in project management i'm learning in leading this team and i'm learning in building this empire that we are doing so we're learning <laughs> incredible so you do all this kind of outreach like these interviews and you know getting the clients so you you you're involved with that side and you're involved with dealing with the clients um personally. yeah we right. deal with the clients yeah. yes mm. okay. recently we started asking the team to interact like just the project managers and the media buyers and the team and the clients to interact as well which is also working because people don't have to worry about like me being a different time zone because one of my project managers in new york and another one is in from australia so they get a 24 hour uh, thing with my project managers and most of the stuff that they want from me is usually around the creatives like hey we want to test this one or hey we want to change this one like and that can be handled within the team i don't have to be there right so i started pulling back a bit to say like okay so this is how it's going to happen uh this this is how we are going to interact with the client and it have we created a slack uh workspace for every client and now i can see everything but also i don't have to respond to everything unless i i'm wanted there which leaves me more space to build the business rather than just to keep communicating with them in messenger and slack and whatsapp wherever that is so it's it was everywhere before i was actually getting overwhelmed and that's how i talked to my coaches again and said like you know i'm getting kind of bombarded with the messages every morning i wake up and i see like 40 to 50 messages from everywhere and i don't even know what to do about it i'm spending like one or two hours interacting with everybody which i don't have to do it's not my mm. work to actually say like hey i want this to be tested and then i pick it up send it to the project managers asking them to do it so then we started this new cycle we i guess we are learning as i said as we grow uh when we were at six figures that's that felt enough like i can interact directly with the clients and we may move into multiple six six figures and then even then even now like i want to interact with the clients uh, and that's never going to change even if i move into eight figures that's never going to change if there is a company for me i'm going to interact with the client uh that's mm. how it works for me and that's how i built it but there is the reason that first that a person comes to me that uh, but they can always go to the project manager and ask if there is a strategy involved yes i would be the right person to actually talk about it if there is mm. like let's say a review an audit a funnel something is not working so i would be the right person to actually guide the team and that's what i'm doing every day and i love it mm-hmm. like okay so okay so this is what we are going to do for this account change all these things and put new ads according to this uh, strategy and that's how uh, that's what i do with the team every day mm-hmm. but so you also the so, problem solver yeah i am yeah. that's mm-hmm. uh, that's why i am the facebook ad strategist actually mm-hmm. so i love solving problems every day and uh, that's what i do best so mm-hmm. i don't have to say like hey can you actually change this word into this and seriously like i don't have to do that like there are people who can actually take care of that even when i'm sleeping right yeah. so they will put into slack and already even by the time i wake up it's already done so that's mm. better for me now i wake up to probably like around 6 to 7 messages and that's fine with me so yeah. probably we when we move into like seven or multiple seven these processes will change and it will become become better but we are learning and we are creating new processes as we go and move into <laughs> and so tell me so are you working from home or have you got an office now where because you, you said you've got some people in house as well yeah i i work from home mm-hmm. okay so this is how it works uh, i work from home my home is just next door actually so uh, okay. the, <laughs> literally next door i can actually see it from here like uh, this way i go open this window i can see my son so uh, okay. so literally next door so and uh, that's that's where i had my assistants as well i had two assistants with me uh, and uh, before like 6 months back i had two assistants and that's we they work with my i had a home office like room I, it's just a room where we work together but i started hiring another two assistants then 
uh, six months back, and it got crowded. Like it's so crowded <laughs> <laughs> within in that small like in the room. Like we were like five people, and it was. I'm not sure whether you were used to doing that. You can't think when so many people are thinking in the same room. Your mm-hmm. thoughts actually get scrambled as well. Uh, so it's so that's when we realized like okay, so we need a space separately. So then we got we got this office like right next door they were open mm-hmm. so we bought it so we actually moved into it for the office so now i can i also i also like connected my uh house and this house uh <laughs> to through a separate path so i don't even have to actually go down and actually get upstairs so it's just a direct connection between my house and them so i can just move on to my house go eat or just spend time time with my son come back here to work at 4 pm or something so then if i have any question they can only come back so it's just like a one minute walk from here and there so it's <laughs> that sounds absolutely perfect so you've got the best of both worlds you don't have your office right inside your home anymore and yep. so your home is separate but you're right there it's so close that's amazing <laughs> sounds like yeah. you've got it i have fun. a home office as well yeah because i take calls okay. like after 10 even so uh, mm. i'm not going to be at office at the time so yeah mm. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my amazing. office actually i'm in my office <laughs> okay you're in your office office <laughs> next door office, to your office, home right. office exactly, <laughs> exactly. okay <Yeah. laughs> great oh that is amazing it sounds like you are just going to grow from strength to strength you've got this absolutely ace because you know that the success is really in solving the problems and you're going to get them all the time i think that's just amazing Uh, you've taught me so much today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It Is there anything great, you'd like to add? <laughs> um. Yeah. I don't know. Like you are talking, you are your client list is like majorly moms, right? Uh, for me, like this all started when I was pregnant. I wanted to actually quit corporate when I uh, when I so I started looking for other jobs and then I that's where I started all these things like I started I uh, I already told you before I went into this entrepreneur space I, I have come into this entrepreneur space I was reading a lot uh, literally a lot my bookshelves and my Kindle actually blew up so uh, which means that I know a lot of publishers I know a lot of publishers I know a lot of authors personally and uh, they have been sending me arcs like advanced reading copies before even get published i can review them so wow. that's how i started it the opportunities are everywhere like i they started that's how i started i i was reading a lot it's not like i and why i was going to get a job around it i was having a corporate job which i was happy about uh, so this reading was my hobby and uh, when i started looking for jobs this publisher came in and said like hey we need someone with marketing can you actually take the job because you're already techy i was a computer science engineer so i was already techy and uh, he asked me that so i was like i don't know anything about marketing i'm an engineer so and he said like that's not a big deal we can teach you and that's how it started wow. and uh, then i thought like oh publishing is not bad is they really use tech i i was with them like for a year and then i thought oh they they don't have a lot of tech and i love tech i try on tech tools so then i spent over to entrepreneurs because they have this shiny object syndrome they want to try all the tech in the world so <laughs> yeah uh, they <laughs> yeah. so i moved into it and it was perfect for me i can actually learn any tech in a day and actually work on it so that's how uh, i was raised and educated on so i started moving into the entrepreneur space i moved into marketing i started learning and then i moved into funnel funnels i started building a lot of funnels and i moved into facebook ads and facebook ads felt like a passion it's not work anymore it's like wow this is what i want to do like even in 5 or 10 years i still want to do this uh that's how it felt like and we sustained it and i fired all my funnel clients and we moved into a full on facebook ads agency so it started from a book guys yeah, literally a fantasy wow. book so uh amazing <laughs> i grew this this something a business so i i don't think i don't uh i don't think anything should stop you or anybody like if you want something just go after it the opportunities will be presenting themselves and 
mm. just jump it's of course you're going to fall somewhere but you would be rising up again and again and that fall will actually tell you like this is going to be a pain but the journey is worth it so mm. of course i have fell like multiple times but i also know like i'm going to be okay i'm going to actually rise up again yeah there is going to be some energy loss and all the other things i'm going to cry for a bit but i'm going to rise again uh there is this whole stuff about like racism cultural differences everything that comes into place but that's what made us unique like that's what made us been made me at least grow much faster than some other agency in the us mm. right so why would i i pay my coaches around like 45000 dollars every year sure okay mm. so why would i not succeed i i'd have every tool to succeed uh like every other person in the world so people can't discriminate against the cells mm. okay people can't discriminate against the cells forever like nobody can actually tell you like hey this is what i got and if they say like hey you are a different color i can't work with you because mm. they are going to lose their clients and business if they say that mm. right so show them what you can do show them the cells you're going to succeed so if mm. you are a mom you can start with a book or something else i have i have seen somebody who actually uh did an amazing funnel teaching how to actually make your kids work for you at home uh so like work household how so how to do work, household chores for you at home and that funnel went to san figures so there's nothing you can't do like literally <laughs> so just start doing something and get better at it that's mm-hmm. what it means Amazing. So you mentioned your coaches. I, I know you said Julie Stowen was one of your coaches. Um, she, she is. She's amazing. I know her as the VA lady. Doesn't she create virtual assistants or teach people to become virtual assistants? Or am I getting the wrong person? Once she did. Oh, that that's what once. she did. Uh, okay. She did a long, long time back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but okay. now she is actually creating. She is a eight-figure person, actually. So, uh, she is. one of those people i adore from the first time i think i i heard her i i found her as a coach when i was having my first 5000 dollar a month or something so even up to now i she is still my coach she's the, she's amazing mm-hmm. uh so yeah she's good at funnels she's how she's good at funnels and offers that's what she's mm-hmm. uh amazing at there are there is a complete business there i think she is running two different businesses she is amazing at everything so mm. you should check it out it's amazing yes i will i'll see what she's been doing lately because that's obviously moved on a lot from when i first looked at julie stone wow and then yeah. you mentioned another coach as well who who's the coach that's helping you scale your business is that her as both well? julie and akbar uh, i worked with akbar remember the team thing that i mentioned and he was pushing me to actually hire someone Mm-hmm. and uh, he is the one who worked on my mindset a lot so mm-hmm. akbar sheik uh, so he's another amazing coach i am so blessed to actually have these people in my life like both mm-hmm. julie and akbar has been i guess my stepping stones uh, for mm-hmm. the success they are wow. they have been with me like i have i have always been vulnerable with my coaches so like i have used to say like everything like literally everything uh, i don't actually pull back or uh, myself like i tell them what it is like even if i make a mistake even if i am mm. afraid of something i am i don't know like even if i feel like i want to quit i would just tell them but mm. these people are you know when i said i know i would fall sometimes i also mm. know that these people would be there for me to actually mm. you know to push me back uh mm. so that's how i knew i'm safe i need these people in my life to know that i'm going to be okay mhm and how often do you meet with them do you have weekly meetings or <laughs> we have walks or access uh so probably and whenever i want okay i i don't uh, message them a lot a boxer is like a walkie talkie app like it's a message voice messaging okay. app uh mm-hmm. so you can message them whenever you want and they will reply back to you within 24 hours so okay. it's mm-hmm. much easier to actually go back and forth uh, mm-hmm. and i know when they actually usually see their boxes so i message them right before that so we can actually go talk immediately 
if they want a call if i want a call i can book them book with them like any time again i don't book a call a lot i usually try to actually send a wax and waxes even that i would probably send around like 3 to 4 times a month that's all i need uh, like whenever i feel down whenever i feel like i need help that's when i actually message them Mm -hmm. so it's like messaging a friend but just more 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 knowledgeable than you and also experienced mm -hmm. than you so you know that they are going to be they are going to be giving you the right decisions so mm -hmm. yeah incredible wow that is so amazing because i really do believe that our coaching the coaches and mentors that we work with can make us well not make us i was going to say make us or break us but they shouldn't ever break us they should only ever make us yeah <laughs> yeah if they break they are not going to be the coach yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And of course you only get a break if you're uh, yeah, if you don't have any coaching or if you don't believe in I think it's a lot harder to build a business without any coaching or mentoring. I do yeah, think it needs it. You probably will build it, but it's going to be like I don't know, very slow. Mm. Extremely slow. So yeah. yeah, I hired my first coach when I earned my first $500. So mm. uh I believe in them like I need a way where someone has already like tread that path and know like this is where someone is going to fall so i don't have to fall again and learn it so yeah sure yeah <laughs> amazing thank you so much uh worst moment and best moment <laughs> in your career so far okay that's a <laughs> that's a weird question but uh, all right so the worst moment is like okay it's not a worst moment anymore but at that time it felt like it uh i used to do sales calls all the time i actually um i was doing service based business and usually i sell on calls okay so which means that i have to go on zoom calls with all these people right uh so i was doing a sales call and one of these one of the speak person like this people come came in and he asked like why are you even like charging this much you are from india you don't have to charge this much uh, <laughs> i i was like uh, i don't know what to say like that was the first time i heard it and this was this happened like i guess when i started out around two years back and i was like what what do i even say to this like mm. uh, i don't know like that was completely uh, i didn't realize that i was not ready for that statement so i mean i realized i i was totally like uh, blown away i mean i was like wow okay so um and he said like maybe you're not actually like the right person you are actually charging and just to be honest i was charging 50 dollars an hour okay uh that <laughs> okay. that that was like when i started out i was a tech person so i was charging 50 dollars per hour and uh, he was like he was it was rude like to say that and then i uh, came out of the call and i started crying and i literally oh. the tears started rolling over like i can't stop and i don't know like the uh, how somebody would just and i don't even uh, the way that he addressed felt literally so rude uh, so he just saw me for the first time and that's the first thing that's the first thing that he asked for me like he asked how much do you charge and i said for 50 dollars and he immediately that's what he immediately thought about like he didn't talk about my skills he didn't talk about mm. my clients he didn't talk about any testimonials or whatever the worth is right mm. he immediately started seeing where i came from so why does it matter i don't know like uh, i don't literally even know right now that how much he is paying for his coaches or how much he is paying paying for increasing his knowledge every day i paid mm. i mean I, even it was as i said even when i earned like 500 dollars i was paying around like 300 dollars to my coaches to actually improve my learning so mm. uh, that was how i was so at the time i didn't actually have a proper response for him but i was so like tired that time and mm. like why why am i even doing this business where am i where oh. am i going to go from here like if 50 dollars is not something that these people can and he's from us 50 dollars is not something he can pay how am i even going to scale this business how how much hours am i going to like do work for in order to actually have a good life mm. so that's how it like felt like and then it moved into it moved right into like i i was getting prepared i we usually all do that i guess like we cry i usually am a problem solver so i started seeing like okay when 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 this happens next time why how what should i do and then i started doing some mindset work and then i started realizing like these people are not ready for me it's not the other way around 
these people are not ready for me at all and i started and within a month i started increasing my price 100 dollars an hour uh so i was like no okay so if you are not ready for 50 dollars an hour it's okay you are not even ready to get on a call with me if you do not actually have to pay that that's fine and uh, now i'm actually charging 1000 dollars per hour wow what are you going to do about it <laughs> so like uh, so oh yeah <laughs> so it's like yeah that's what happens right i mean you push somebody and you actually make them i guess grow uh that to a part where you can't reach them and uh, immediately uh, like now after that particular moment i started raising my prices and now as i said we charge 1000 dollars per hour for one hour of audit with me and uh, like nobody ever questioned after that from where i came from wow. nobody ever like uh, after that i have probably got into hundreds of other calls right mm-hmm. like not one has questioned like why are you charging this much and they always have felt yeah. like oh maybe i'm not ready that's how they feel like and i'm fine with that mm-hmm. yeah i probably actually sound sadistic by right now but that's how it uh, that's how it actually feel felt like when they actually asked i have had multiple people ask after that like when i charge 50 dollars and even like 40 dollars like per hour but that was tech work now i'm actually changing businesses literally so now i can charge because they know that they are going to get back their money Mm. so that's yeah. that's i think that's a thing about me like i know i know as i said like i know i'm going to cry i know i'm going to actually fall sometimes i'm going i know i'm going to actually be get crushed by bad people sometimes that's fine uh it's it's okay i'm sensitive i'm an introvert and uh, that's how it feels like to be an introvert being questioned when they are not ready so and it's fine i grew I I grew for my business I grew for my own passion mm. and uh, now it feels like yeah I'm doing the right job if you're not ready you can get out of here so mm. like mm. I don't have to actually hear rude insults or bad comments about my culture or race I love my accent I love my culture I love my I love where I'm from if you're not ready go get the hell out and I'm fine because I can actually prove to every single person in the world that I can do a better job than any other person. So yeah, you have your value. So once you knew your value, um, it was really easy to answer that question. It it made you question, okay, am I am I worth this? Oh no, I'm worth more. And so you started started charging double. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah, I started I started actually learning. I, that's the thing. Yeah. I started. not mm-hmm. just learning from experience i literally started up boosting my knowledge like mm-hmm. i have to know more what would what would make these people stop caring about all these other things mm-hmm. if color race gender whatever that is what would make these people stop yeah. thinking about these things uh and just give me my worth right or give me like what i'm worth and they don't actually think about anything else that mm-hmm. means that i have to literally change their life and business what do i have to learn i have to do funnels okay i learned i learned a mm-hmm. lot about funnels we have multiple to come up club award winning funnels under our belt so then we started moving into funnels and then now i know like facebook ads and then i know mm-hmm. like okay wow i can do this i love numbers i am techy and i can actually i i'm really good with human psychology so which means that i have the perfect combination to actually go into the facebook ads and it felt mm-hmm. so good because mm-hmm. funnels are i guess more my education uh funnels are easy for me mm-hmm. facebook ads um facebook ads are challenging every day that's what i love so mm-hmm. and that is what i wanted to do and mm-hmm. it became better because i started giving them results and that's why i said initially like people can't discriminate against results they mm-hmm. can't do anything about it if they want results they have to come to you whoever you are wherever you are mm-hmm. so Mm, that's amazing that's what i think i think it's the worst time uh if i ask about the worst time i i think it's still the worst time and i think about it it still feels bad but mm-hmm. i have learned after that so mm. <laughs> that's a good thing <laughs> and your best your best moment what what what, what are you doing this for like is there a is there a re- like a deep driving desire to have something or be something what is your your real um motivation for doing this okay so initially it started off as just a financial situation like i want to quit my job i want to stay with my son that's mm. how it felt like 
but after after i started doing ads it feels more like i want to do this because i know i have the power to change multiple people's lives their teams their businesses and they are going to change even more so mm-hmm. and if i have that why do i have to actually hide behind a system that because i'm an introvert no that's not going to work i want to be out there i want to actually say out loud that i am freaking amazing at in facebook ads and i want to actually help you so because they are amazing at what they do i just want to help and that's not bad to say if they don't know you they are going to get whenever i get these people like at least uh, 20 to 30% of the people who get on sales call with me they have been scammed by another media buyer of test card mm. which is very very like tough to listen because you do so much abi i mean an agency actually do so much in order to actually make them feel good make them feel comfortable make them get results and after mm-hmm. all this i get all the i get these client these potential clients who say like oh we have been scammed like three times before i have already paid like 25000 dollars and they i didn't care about it. i'm like wow how did this even like happen like mm-hmm. i you know mm-hmm. and i know how this happened because the good marketers they are not out there they are mm. not actually selling themselves they are not actually yeah. paying attention because this happened because we are not out there telling that we can do this and you don't have to actually get engaged with bad marketers because they sell well mm. right they are the mm. best sales people they are not best marketers so mm. interesting so so i wanted to actually get out there that that was my that became my motive after i started working on ads like wow like i want to get out there they don't want they don't have to be like doing bad things that's also why i started promoting like a small land product maybe they are not ready for me yet but they still that doesn't mean they have to go ahead and uh you know pay a bad or wrong marketer and get scammed out of it so mm. uh that then i started putting a 37 dollar product so at least know how to fix your own ad so don't get actually don't lose your money to somebody that you don't have to so if you are giving your money you have to know that they will do everything for you to succeed hmm. right so that's yeah. how it should feel like if it doesn't feel like that you don't have to do it but that's hmm. how that's what people are doing people are desperate for our actually this is and they are hmm. going after all these amazing sales people not marketers mm. so so how do they spot a scam so if somebody's out there in the market and they think oh i want to run facebook ads but i have no idea how to do it who what are the scam artists tell them <laughs> usually they i think it's very very tough unless you actually see their real results okay mm. there are agencies who actually take other people's results and show them uh like they just take out words and actually show them because i have been asked like by certain people like hey can i use your testimonials and show it as well like, what why would what? you do that that's not going to happen like uh, <laughs> you can actually own your own stuff like i'm not going to give uh, uh because like even me i don't use my own testimonials unless i have a client's approval completely on them so it's like crazy uh that even others ask about it and uh, even if they are going to white label it that's still not a not, not the right thing because white labeling works if they are going to be on a contract with a company for like 5 years or something if they actually go out like let's say they use our testimonials get some people even if they are white labeling uh with the same let's say us with the same agency what if they what if we leave in another 2 months out of the company they are screwed those clients who got in because of us they are screwed that's not the right way to actually do things if you are doing something go get the right results and then do it and that's why i usually ask for video testimonials from people instead of like uh-huh. text testimonials uh, uh-huh. you have to see the real because stats they can be like mimic like you can take anybody stats and show but uh-huh. video testimonials you have the real name of the person and then they say it uh-huh. right so that usually is not tampered usually uh but uh it happens but the best case scenario that's usually when it happens but you can always book an audit with them that's the best case scenario like you can book an audit with that person usually it, they charge around like 500 to 1000 for an audit but you will also know the real worth of the person when they mm. do an audit whether they are really knowledgeable to actually t- guide you 
for the next few months instead mm. of actually spending like literally 5000 or 10000 or even like 50000 dollars on a particular ad spend plus the management fee you can uh, do a audit for a few dollars few hundred dollars and get it done like see how they actually respond see whether their um, knowledge matches with what you are actually doing whether they can read the ads whether they can provide the solution and then go with them if you feel them right mm okay. okay for us personally whenever we do an audit if they become a client with an, with us for the next 3 months we refund the audit money back mm-hmm. okay so oh, wow. audit is just a uh, part of the procedure because we already mm. audited the account we don't have to do it again so mm. uh, that money is not going to go to waste for them okay okay that's amazing so that's really good advice so for everybody all of you out there who are looking to do facebook ads make sure you ask for an audit first from whoever's approached you <laughs> or whoever yeah, you're approaching yeah. and um yeah, see yeah. if they're willing to pay you back the audit money later when you become a client because that's a really good test <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is that is great. That's a wonderful thing that you offer your clients. Um and yeah. sure, I'm just so proud of you and what you've done at the age of 32. I think it is incredible to see your success and I'm sure you're going to go from strength to strength. So that last question which I keep asking in a roundabout way, your best moment. Best. <laughs> your yeah, best best moment. <laughs> <laughs> This moment is actually like when I go uh it might actually sound like simple but it's not for me so i'm just giving you a fair warning you know like when i travel before i used to think a lot like oh how much is this going to cost like okay so it's going to put a toll on my budget like uh, you know whenever i get a dress or even purchase on amazon or let's say i go to a trip somewhere i used to think about all this like stuff like it's kind of uh, maybe people are used to it most of the times mm. but it's kind of like restlessness like oh I don't want that. It's like sacrificing. It's like compromising mm. every time you say no to those things. Like, oh, I can't afford it. That's fine. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. And that's like a constant buzz uh like mm. in your head like what do what can I even afford? Like do I have to have like a filter like which says like I can't afford anything past $50? Like how how am I even going to survive in this world? So I can't get past this $50 at all in my life. like how what if i want more like so do i have to actually sacrifice on some other thing that i want that buzz is like it's annoying it's frustrating i don't want that and becoming an entrepreneur and changing this like into this mode it felt so good to actually not worry about that past like i stopped worrying about it like two years back i don't know like what the yeah. price of that dress is what i'm buying at the end if the amazon shows me like 10000 dollars i still don't care i want it i want to buy it and it's not going to put it all on my budget i'm still going to be okay and if i go do a go to go to a trip somewhere i find something really good i buy it i and then i actually when when i pay for the money i ask for it yeah we of course bargain if if it's like lame price uh, like it's too much but that's not how it happens immediately right i'm not actually bargaining because i don't have money i'm bargaining because it's not worth that money that's how it feels mm-hmm. it's different the entire mindset shift that changed where i don't have to actually see to the small details i want a, i want i i want i wanted these airpods mm-hmm. we we bought it the very the next week the very next week that we went to a store we bought it i loved it but mm-hmm. before this i would have probably thought about like when my next birthday is going to come so i can ask for it yeah and i was like it was so good you know i don't have to wait for some special occasion to buy something that i like to buy mm-hmm. something that my kid likes to buy a dress like i have to actually wait and wait and wait and wait and then uh and then i would say like should i put this on emi like uh, installment on my credit card what should i do like that that's how i lived i know that life i that's how uh, we all do like i think we were all at a point where we have to think of these things and still something still that doesn't mean you can spend whatever you can spend like uh, on whatever you want it just means that if you want something that badly you can buy it right and mm-hmm. as i said it doesn't seem like much but i have mm-hmm. i haven't lived my entire childhood until i got married i have never had a debt in my life 
so after i got married we had all these debts and i was like it was frustrating it was so compressing i can't deal with it right uh, i was depressed like oh that's too much like why do i have to always think about how am i going to pay off these debts i can't do anything so which was all like when that settled it's like you know the fog was completely removed from your eyes like wow this world is really this beautiful like it was it was, was it always like this or am i just seeing <laughs> that's how it feels like so yeah <laughs> wow no i can relate to that i can absolutely relate to that so when did you become debt free then was it 5 years in or how long did it take you to become like debt-free? I guess it's around like the uh, two years back. I guess two years back. Two years back. So okay. we bought a home. So we had a home loan even. We even cleared off that home loan like two years back. Wow. So it was like, oh, okay, we now own a home at thirty, and I don't have a debt. So <laughs> amazing <laughs> feeling. Amazing feeling. Is that when you started to travel a bit as well? Yes, uh, we put a money on the travel. Like my husband is very, very, very understanding. Like so, he. he knows like i need the space between business and work and family and work whenever i need uh, he usually asks or pushes me to book some spots so i can get the time off uh, of course we go as a family but it's still good to actually stay away from computer i mm. even on weekends i can't actually stay away from computer i have to sit with sit with it at least for 10 minutes to check all the accounts are fine uh, so it's good to actually stay away uh even if i go on a trip i book for a week now because it takes me around 2 or 3 days to really disconnect from the world i was living in mm. so uh i have to actually book like an entire week so at least the last four the four days i can really enjoy that i am so yeah <laughs> wonderful so sure. that's amazing well I am just blown away by you and uh your business looks fantastic and when I become a coach cuz that's uh, on my radar I'm definitely coming to you. <laughs> <For Facebook ads. laughs> we would be happy to have you. Oh, that'll be exciting. Thank you. <laughs> when I'm ready to scale. <laughs> yep. You yeah. will be. <laughs> Everybody yeah. is. Thank you so much. That was really wonderful. Anything else you want to add Thank before you. we close off? No, I think I actually took from more of your time, but you've given me so much time. Wow. I know because you originally only had half an hour and I asked for an hour and look at us. <laughs> We've had a great chat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That Thank was you. Awesome. Okay, keep well. Bye-bye. Bye.